You probably already know that in order to use those top-notch, massive contact libraries, you need a powerful CPU and enough RAM to get you through it. But even then, you might experience audio glitches or dropouts during playback. So in today's video, I wanna show you the one setting that can be an absolute game changer for you and stop the headaches of stopping your production process to freeze tracks or purge all samples. Plus, I'm gonna show you some more tips how to maximize your RAM while you're using these libraries. First, in order to understand the impact that these changes can make, let's take a look at the instrument header if you're not familiar with it. So when you run contact in the default setting, you're probably used to seeing a large amount of RAM like this that are being used. And you can see how easily using four contact instruments can add up in terms of how much RAM it's taking up. When you go into the settings, you're gonna see the memory tab and you might be familiar with this setting already, but the instrument preload buffer size. When this is unchecked, which is the default setting, it's my understanding that the vast majority of contact libraries have a default built into them, which is 60 kilobytes. And what that means is that that is the amount, that is the size of each individual sample from that patch that is loaded into your RAM. So to go back to the amount of RAM that was being used just by loading those patches, now I wanna show you how much is actually needed based on clearing the samples and playing back what I have in my project. Now look at the huge difference that this made. So I purged all samples and before, when I first loaded the patch for the Brass Ensemble, it used 630 megabytes. I'm only actually using 9.7 megabytes. So that's a lot of RAM being taken up for no reason, slowing down other processes. Now going back to the setting here, when you select this, you are effectively overriding the default buffer size. And what this allows you to do essentially is to load less of the sample into your RAM and stream it directly from your hard drive. And the key here, this is where the tweaking comes into play based on your setup. You have to choose whether you wanna prioritize CPU or RAM. So let's look at this case. You have a little bit older CPU, not as powerful as it should be, but you have 32 plus gigabytes of RAM. You're gonna to want to utilize all that RAM and to demonstrate this, I'm gonna show you here, as I slide this and increase the size of the preload buffer size, you're gonna see more of the samples loaded in to the contact patch. If you are somebody that's working with a limited amount of RAM, then this is where this comes into play with the assumption that you use SSDs because streaming from a regular old HDD hard drive it's not really optimal, which is why you hear over and over again how important it is to use solid state drives for your sample libraries. They're just so much faster at reading the data, so it's easier for a seamless streaming of the samples when you're playing them right on the keyboard at command, on command. I wanna show you this for a quick illustration of a side-by-side -side comparison to before and after of the performance meter inside of Logic. And for context, I'm using a 3.8 gigahertz Intel 8-core i7 on my iMac here, and there's not really a huge difference in the CPU usage. In the beginning, when I had the default settings and the larger amount of samples loaded into the RAM, you'll see that the CPU by threads in the Logic performance meter, I was using, I don't know, around 15% each thread. And you might notice the one on the far right here, which is up near 50%, that's actually Ozone 10. It's pretty CPU heavy. Then comparing it to afterwards when I'm utilizing my SSD to stream, which you think would cause the CPU to have to do more work because it's not preloaded into the RAM, it's actually kind of hanging around the same. There is for sure at least two to 3% more CPU being used per thread, but that's kind of negligible in the grand scheme of things, which is a really good segue into my next point that I want to bring up about contact is that you hear a lot of people saying that you have to use contact multis. If you're using single instances for every contact instrument, you're going to be struggling. It doesn't really seem to make a huge difference. It's going to, again, it's going to use a little bit more CPU, but at the end of the day, not really worth it. And it's a much easier workflow to have a single instance dedicated to each instrument rather than having to use the complexity of multis, in my opinion. Here are the key takeaways from this though. And like I said before, you're gonna have to play around with this a little bit, depending on your situation, depending on what processor you have, depending on how much RAM you have. And 
more importantly, depending on the project that you're using, which is where those other tips start to come into play. So if you are using a very, very large amount of contact libraries, especially if it's kind of like an orchestral based thing, it can really start to add up. In that case, that's where you want to start implementing the purge all samples and just allow it to load the samples that are necessary based on what you've already produced. So I encourage you to take the time to figure out the perfect balance between your RAM and your CPU based on the buffer size that works best for you. And to give you a little context, I found that 12 kilobytes works well for me. My SSDs work fast enough that I don't have to worry about it. And the best part of all this is that the patches load a lot quicker when you're streaming them right from the SSD, not loading them into your RAM. So let me know in the comments if you have any more questions and make sure to stay tuned for the next video where I'm going to give you some more solid tips on using Contact 7.